When have we seen Klaus come in with the mass hog attacks? He's pulling a full on synthé hogs and bacon all the way here. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric. We are live in the GCC tournament. The Global Clash Cup is really just kicking off here. So a brand new tournament circuit that is in a advanced season. Like, I don't know even what season they're on right now. They just feel like this tournament's been going forever, but a staple in the Clash of Clans community. Let's see if I see you can get it done. If you aren't familiar with Boom Academy, you'd like to know that Boom Academy is a mix of Darkest Muzan and HT Family. So it is a very, very good team that has been dominant throughout the Chinese community for a long time. And after the Chinese servers split from the international servers, this team has been one of the front runners there as they regathered a lot of those Chinese players, but he does have his warden taking some heavy damage there, and he almost went to an auto ability there, but he's able to recover it and get that Inferno frozen up there, transfer the damage off of his warden, and the healers are on the super rollers exactly where they need to be. His queen is working on the outside of the base? What? He puts the queen to the outside working with the witches and the king goes to the inside. He swaps them from what we normally see. Why on earth? Why? I mean, I guess we'll see if it works here. But he pops the ward ability in the middle of the base there. He didn't have a chance to pair it with the ward or with the king ability, but he will have a strong push towards the town hall and He's just kind of toting that hound along there, and he had the poisons to deal with, and he air targeted CC, and he just avoids fighting the hound altogether by putting his queen separate and has the king just drag it around here. The king will go back to the town hall now and finish off that last shot there while the world champion starts to sweep around. She has her ability. He does need the protection through the defensive king and through the single inferno, but the world champion is going to potentially get stalled up on this lava hound. That could be a bit of a problem here, but a wall break in. Uh, it's not really necessary. He's got access to everything with the queen, though. He's gonna reach all the way to the single front of the world champion. He's gonna get burned up right here. Healers are coming back over, though. Wait, wait, wait. Where are these healers going? They're going to the barbarians. I wonder if those barbarians could just end up dying out here. If he could have, at a minimum, these healers stay on that side and give the queen some protection through the inferno, she could then burn through the inferno and the defensive king there with her ability. But look at these yetis coming from the bottom side there. They engage the king there with that last headhunter that he had on standby. And I think he's got it here. I think the yeti ends up taking out the expo. And it might even get some damage heavily into... Wait, do the Yetimites go to... Okay, they go to the Arch Tower. I say, maybe they go to the King. They do! They go to the King! And the Arch just stepped through! He bypasses the King! And he's got it! ICU, formerly HT Family. And boom! Academy. Takes our first triple. Striking first for the Queen Walkers will be Gaku. Coming in with a Queen Charge Lalo. Log Launcher approach here. And let's see. He starts in the Queen in from the bottom corner of the base here. Now, do you put the log launcher with the king? Or do you put it with the queen? Seeing as he doesn't have any wall breakers and he doesn't have any jump spells, I assume that the queen will use the log launcher to push across to the town hall here. But he'll rage up the queen, rides all the way down to almost go to ability there, but last second there, because that rage down and tops the queen all the way back off here. We'll need the king to go in and go through the Eagle Artillery here to make sure the Queen doesn't get any funny ideas and break off to the right. Also getting the Eagle Artillery down. Always beneficial to do at the very start of the attack there, but there's almost no damage on... There's no more really damage potential onto this uh, flame... Or Log Launcher, I mean, as the Queen makes her way through. Or maybe the multi inferno as the Queen picks up the, the target on all of the defenses in the area. Look how she steps into the range of the cannon right at the perfect time. She steps in, grabs out that multi inferno she'll pick up the cannon over the wall. Here comes the King. Sneaky Goblins come down to support the King to drive him into the base. You can cut off the channel as well, so when the king goes in, he doesn't go into the channel, he goes into the Eagle Artillery compartment. And here comes the Warden and the Royal Champion, all working with the king, as they will try to drive through that compartment, and he'll want the Royal Champion to survive, with the king distracting, and get this single Inferno down. If they go all the way to the defensive queen, that is just icing on the cake here, but the queen doing some good work. Her way in towards his other single Inferno, hopefully she ducks away from that one. I want to go invisible here. Rage is up. Okay, okay. Her ability will at least carry her in to one-shot the Inferno that was already weakened up by the Log Launcher, but now she can make her approach towards the Town Hall unless this Tesla farm draws her south. Okay, she's going towards the Town Hall. Lose the healer to a Black Mine, but his heroes have gone all the way up to the top of the base there. The Royal Champion locks onto the Defensive Queen after taking out that other single Inferno. And his queen does survive and takes out that town hall. Rage her up one more time. She'll pick off the expo. Does it carry through the king as well? 
steps into the king. Our champion's coming through. At least the king will be distracted at a minimum here while the queen just holds his attention and keeps the royal champion safe as she rounds around. His warden, look at the health on his warden right now. Did he take a black mine or something? Something's going on with him. He's down to very low HP here, but he's got plenty of time. He's got plenty of force here. The balloons are staying in front of the world champion. He drops in more balloons around that side, freezes it up, and he'll get the triple here for the Queen Walkers. They will be tied with Boom Academy after our first round of attacks here. Nicely done. Good execution here from Gaku all the way through. It was a scary moment there with the Queen, but ended like a champ. Grubby live from Boom Academy. This is a player that I'm not super familiar with. I don't know that this was a player on either HD Family or Darkest we saw, but we'll see what he can do here with Electro Dragons. With their second attack here. Got a Log Launcher slot? Why do you use a Log Launcher with Electro Dragons? I guess we'll find out. He'll use that ward ability really early here. Unfortunately, the left side Electro Dragon did not get protected by the ward ability, but he does quickly get that air defense down and Everything else is protected as he puts the side-by-side -side rages here on his entry into the base. Get the defensive king out of the way there. Got the defensive queen. Notice how he charges into the eagle artillery and as many of the defensive heroes as possible as early into the attack as possible. Here comes the CC pull. It is headhunters and archers, meaning there is a lava hound that's still inside of the CC. He has the log launcher coming through. Log launcher coming in opposite of the town hall. I guess it might drive the heroes through, but he does end up having his heroes pull the... Lava Hound out of the defensive CC. If this Log Launcher can destroy the single Inferno, he can definitely do some good work with it. It'll also put some heavy damage onto the Town Hall here as our VLS makes their approach. Another raid, got a couple freezes here. World Champion yet to be deployed. Gordon dying out up top though. Not much you can really do to save him, but he does get that Inferno down and the Queen is finally finishing dealing with the pop stairs. The e drag finishes off the rest of them. Rage up as Yetis pop out of that log launcher and get into the town hall. The Queen steps into assist, and here comes the Royal Champion on the backside. And honestly, honestly, this Royal Champion is swag. It's just coming down to speed it up here. Pop that RC ability and Grubby ripping that base off in a very fast attack here with Electro Dragons. And he swags his RZ completely, basically. And it's uh, Queen. He just put him down for time. Yeah, time he did. Kazuma live with a Queen Charge Lalo. Stick into the Queen Charge Lalo. Two attacks now. I see you on defense. Kazuma is the newest player here to the Queen Walkers. And he's one of the highest hit rate players in the world. In the 2020 season, he literally was the highest hit rate player in the world there, averaging over an 80. 80% hit rate. He was average, I think, over the course of the entire 2021 season of all the leagues that were tracked, he ended up with about an 87% hit rate there, the highest in the world. He has the log launcher that opens up access to the core of the base there. Yet he's come surging out of there and we'll see if we get that multi inferno down. But the queen is continuing off to the left side there, staying away from everybody else there. He tried to wall break her in to the inferno, but the wall breaker ended up dying a tile early. And I hope I didn't just jinx him because. He's going to have to survive the Queen through the single Inferno, and he's got the spell support to do it. The Yetis in the middle there work with the Warden, work with the Royal Champion, fight off the CC. The King continues all the way up to the top of the base here, and he's honestly looking pretty strong here, especially with the Royal Champion. The Warden still working as they move into at least one of these scatter shots. The Queen will engage the defensive Queen. The Warden will finish off that scatter shot. And he can get his queen to finish off the town hall. And then he has this small Lalo. Most of this was invested for both the kill squad and the queen charge. And the queen has made it all the way across the town hall. Good patience, good control through there. And a bit of a risk there always whenever you rely on the queen to take the town hall. And you put so much into that kill squad in from the right side. It does leave you very little for the Lalo in the backside here. So now it will deploy as the Queen engages the defensive Royal Champion. This will stick north and he just... Literally, the Lalo has one target. The entire Lalo has one target and the Warden will come in and assist the Lalo here. He's got the Headhunters to get the Royal Champion out of the way. His Queen will pop her ability. She would have handled it if they didn't, but this is absolutely crushed there. That's how we get it done. Kazuma rocking another one. Here we go. Kanara is live. Coming in with a Flame Flinger into a Queen Charge Hog Rider attack. We will have 
the Flame Flinger that can potentially go after the Town Hall. He's got an Earthquake that he can use to activate the Town Hall. Yeti forms a funnel on the left side. He puts in the Flame Flinger after the Queen is holding the tension of the Mortar. And she'll hold the tension of the Ground Expo. He's already got the Tessas pulled out on the right side of the base here. So this Flame Flinger very, very likely will go all the way in and take this Town Hall out. Protecting the Queen on her flank here. And he can just delay the Earthquake until he gets a little bit closer. Don't want to activate it too early. Otherwise, the Battle Builders will start to repair the damage. And... You'd like to keep that thing moving as quickly as possible. So for maximum efficiency, we will hold on to the Earthquake until it's about ready to lock onto that Town Hall. Bane fights off the defensive Queen. Rages up and we'll fight off the CC now. We've got a partial CC pull there. Just got six archers, seven archers, eight archers, however many that was. And a couple, uh, one headhunter there. So there's still a Lava Hound inside of the CC as he only pulled it with a Bloom. So they're targeting groups were the only ones that deployed out there. There's the Earthquake as he starts to make his way in towards the middle of the base. The World Champion of the King working across the top side. He jumps to connect them all together. The King is going to end up going to the Multi-Inferno compartment. And if he cuts off the Queen and goes north, they can take out the Multi and drive the Queen through the jump. They have two separate targets there, but they're going to work in tandem. And actually, he's... Okay! All right, RC! RC steps in with the Queen to help us taking the Town Hall down. The Flame Flinger continues across the bottom of the base. Here comes the Hogs in the top side. Swarm in there with the Headhunters and get the Defensive King down. And with the Queen now in the middle of the base there, taking down the Road Champion. She almost goes to ability and lost her Queen through the ability, but he is able to pull through here, get that Defensive... Rock Champion down into the scatter shot, and he's absolutely crushed it here. Valka comes to the backside to help clean up and get these last couple defenses tanked and down. A couple of giant bombs of the traps going out there on those last few hogs there while he works his way through, but he's got more than enough to get it done here. And if we think about the average attack time, Boom Academy is killing it. They've had a lot of fast attacks there. This one leaves 35 seconds on the board there. Absolutely crushed, but that E Drag attack really, really. Doing him some favor on overall attack time if it ultimately comes down to that. Stars is live! Coming in with a anti two star base on defense here. And he's got a Blizzard Lalo. Now, does he use the Warden to try to push a Blizzard all the way in to take the Town Hall directly? I don't think he does. I think he just goes after maybe a Scatter Shot, maybe the Single Inferno, or I guess, yeah, the Scatter Shot. So that way. He just nukes out everything from the inner ring, the the start of the core, and this outer ring here so that he can quickly, with those blooms working on the outside, he can collapse in the trash and then punch his heroes in to go take the Town Hall down. No drama here on this initial drop. We'll get the defensive queen down as well. Can he reach over there and get that multi-inferno down? If he has the wizards go that way, he'll use the invisibility. If he doesn't, then there's no point in doing it. He'll get the last strike on the storage on the outside, and you can see that all the defenses between the edge of the base and the town hall are destroyed and that's exactly what he's looking for because now he'll need to drive his queen all the way in and take this town hall down but he's gonna have to protect her all the way in there's a hard hitting defenses all the way in like the defensive warden like the defensive heroes so he'll need to get those under control here and preserve his queen ability all the way in till he's ready to pop it on that town hall takedown he has the invisibility so he can correct her pathing if necessary but he would like that invisibility to stay intact here he does have a couple tesla's pop on the left hand side of the base there and if there's a full tesla farm over there and that messes up the funnel it could be devastating for his attack but he punches the king right into the base he will want the world champion to drop in on that left side he's got a giant he'll throw the giant down first he has a baby dragon as well. He will get the baby dragon to help clear up these ground skellies that are popping in that area. But the king goes wide to the outside, and that may be a bit of an issue, but he does turn back to the inside and will help engage the defensive king. He does get the attention of the king first, makes his queen go invisible. She is hugging the wall there pretty tight, but she should make her way in. He might need a freeze on this defensive row champion. Ah, okay, pops his ability. That's not good. That's not good. Does he have the punch to take the town hall down now? Look at that multi down. The town hall's about to activate. He's got to start freezing it. Freeze the sweeper with it, getting extra value out of the freezes to also support the blues as they make their way through. But now the warded ability is protecting the queen. He's able to save her. Also protects the world champion and the balloons all together. And that ice golem that came out early is moving to the backside there to help everybody move through the back end defenses. And he'll completely overwhelm 
the right side of the base there. Good control all the way through and plenty of spell support left that he could have continued to freeze up the town hall indefinitely. Maybe not indefinitely, but for quite a while. He'll swag the freezes, swag the haste, and the Queen Walkers match him once again. Boom is live from Boom Academy. <laughs> He'll be also doing a Queen Charge Lalo, but this one using the Flame Flinger. Using the Queen to hold the tension of the Mortar here, hopefully. Uh, okay, it does end up targeting the Flame Flinger. Maybe Dragon will help push it into the base here. The Queen at least holds the tension of the Expo, and Flame Flinger will try to survive along the outside of the base there. Unfortunately, it did take a lot of damage, so it is greatly weakened up there but he does have the ice glow make its way all the way in and help assist the queen as she makes her approach towards the core her funnel is clean and with the flame flinger cleaned up behind her and the other heroes coming in in front of her the flame flinger is doing the same job that we saw in the last one but he has a lot more heavy defenses that the queen's gonna be wanting to move her way through and since he didn't get the cc pull to start you definitely need the queen charge rather than a Sui hero here to be able to survive the CC and survive these hard hitting defenses since she's going after a lot more than we saw out of Star's Queen there. But he will charge his way in. If this scatter shot down, the Flame Flinger takes out the Grand Warden and drives the Queen directly into the middle base. Of the Roar Champion pops up on the right side, but she's going to run into the defensive Roar Champion. She will go down. He needs to start in the Lalo from the right side so he can get faster access into the Roar Champion. We can potentially have to use his ward ability. There are a lot of ground expos on the base there and cannons spread throughout that area. So the defensive ward champion will need the support of the ward ability to get the headhunters protected so they don't die to the ground expos. That does protect him on his approach to the multi inferno as well. A couple of red bombs are going off. Holy, holy, holy red bombs! Come on, get that inferno down! Yes, he got the inferno! The red bomb smoked the entire pack of balloons! But he is able to overwhelm it. He lost that pack, but he had plenty more coming in from the bottom. He almost had the word ability to cover that. Can't really plan for those big old trap blocks there, but he's able to power through anyways. And it is a fourth triple for Boom Academy. And right now, with time in their favor, they may force some fast attacks. We know that Yuda can make out some really, really fast attacks here if necessary. We'll have to see if he needs to, but at this point he might, because if the average attack time is in favor of Boom Academy, that could put the war in their favor if it comes down to the double perfect, and Boom Academy is one away. Here we go. Klaus is live. Does he go for the fast attack? He goes for... <laughs> yes! Klaus is going in for the Mass Hog Kill Squad Wall Wrecker attack! Let's go! When have we seen Klaus come in with the mass hog attacks? He's pulling a full-on synthe hogs and baking all the way here. Sends in that wall wrecker to go past the king and the queen. Now let's try to set up these heroes to get some good value. The king holding the tension of both of the expos here. And the wall wrecker will run down the inferno and make its way all the way in to take the town hall down and pull the CC. The queen gets funneled off to the left side there and hopefully she accepts into that expo and then continues on to pick up the scatter shot. That's what he's going for there, but the king still holding his ability. Will end up breaking that side there. The expos transfer over to the queen. This makes her way in. The headhunters take off to the king and the hound is chilling in the middle of the base. There he's got what sneaky goblins inside of there, I assume. The goblins now deploy out. The queen pops her ability, locks out of the scatter shot. Will take the scatter shot before transferring over to the lava hound. That expo will take her down there before she has a chance to really clean up all these pups, and he'll have to quickly handle those. But that time is ticking away here. He's really going to rely on Yuda to be able to clear out the last base there. But they do get to see what Boom Academy does before they have to decide what they do. So that will be a little bit of a saving grace there. Is the Hound completely dealt with here? Deploys a giant to hold the tension of the scatter shot, or does it get that? Maybe not. He has the heal spell down though, and he's got plenty of heal spells, three of them to make his way through the base here. Then he whizzes down behind and he'll try to get that to the defensive heroes here. The path theme looks clean. They're staying all together there, taking advantage of the whole created by the town hall and the CC to control their path theme through the base there, sprinkling in more hogs as he continues to make his way through. 
Our champion leads that charge there. There's the next skill spell. Skeletal spells come down to hold attention of these single infernos and lock up these defensive heroes here. Ground skill is popping all across the bottom base there. Definitely would be worth a poison down there. Drops it in now. More skelly spells down south. He puts in headhunters to get through the defensive king. There's the last heal spell. He's got four freezes to lock up the backside. Baby dragon comes in to push everything to stay on the inner path here and they do baby dragon perfectly timed has the rc ability clean it up fast here klaus because time is ticking away and every second could make a difference here a wizard on that side barely survives pop that rc ability clears out the rest of the defenses into cleanup we go time is of the essence here he's gonna swag for freezes are you kidding klaus but could he could he have spent those freezes to maybe speed this up I don't think he could have done it much faster than he did. He obviously didn't need the freezes. The hogs are still moving to full force here. He leaves up 17 seconds on the board, ties up the score, and will come down to the final two attackers as the Queen Walkers end up above their previous average attack time. So they are 18 seconds on average behind over the course of four attacks. So whatever 18 times four is, that's how much that Yuda will have to beat the last attacker from Boom Academy in time to be able to have a chance to pull through with the Queen Walkers. But if Boom Academy misses, all Yuda will have to do is triple. Or beat it, I guess. Boom Academy with their final attacker and he's not going for the fast attack. He's going for an attack that typically goes all the way down to the timer here. It is a Flame Flinger. Queen charge into Dragon Riders. And if he triples, he'll force the Queen Markers to triple and beat the time. But if he doesn't triple, it's a lot of pressure off of Yuda. Kane will make her approach to the Town Hall. Honestly, they're so ahead on time that he can go with a slower attack here and do it comfortably and not have to worry about it too much here. Puts the Warden down with the Queen. The Warden and the Queen there hold the tension of the Expo. And will hold attention of the mortars. They make their way into the base here. Queen funnel. There's a CC pull. Mortar gets distracted, and the flame flinger will finish clearing out the left flank, and will continue working along that edge there. The queen and the warden can reach a decent amount of the defenses here. So like, hopefully the queen doesn't take away the targets too much. Overall, good control. Flame finger steps in. Oh wait, the queen and the warden gave up the tanking on that mortar, so it starts to take strikes. But the warden ability protects the flame flinger and it will get the mortar down without losing much hp it still took two strikes there unfortunately out of the three that went at it it only ended up protecting it against one of the strikes there i think oh oh i just lost his queen uh oh that's not good that's not good okay okay how do you pull this back now he's got the hound he's got the three dragon runners the Warden is hogging the healers here as the Royal Champion moves along the right flank. The King's gonna die out and the Royal Champion will now pull the attention of the Warden. Does need to get something, a minion or something to go clear up those pups that are on his healers right now. But the Flame Flicker's still moving. The Royal Champion makes her way into the middle of the base here. Has her ability. She'll rage up. That also rages up the healers. Come on, healers. Transfer, transfer, transfer forward. Get onto the Royal Champion. The are... Down to the last one deployed now, but they all have good health here. The Flame Flinger drops out some Yetis. This Royal Champion dies out, but the Warden continues on with the healers. Those minions finally lock onto these pups that have been chasing the healers the entirety of the attack here. He does throw down the poison to help deal with all these ground skills that are popping inside the Tesla farm. The Yetis will get a little bit more value. The Dragon Runners are taking out that Inferno. But does he have enough here? Just lost the Warden. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the threshold for you to cross here. They get a lucky break on this one as Boom Academy goes flawless the whole war. But then loses the Queen Charge and scrambles this one in for an attack into the 80s here. Can you reach all the way up to the 90s? They got the Wizard working down south there. And these minions chipping away here. Every single point percentage can make a difference in the overall result of the war. But what a war did Boom Academy put up here. 14 stars leaves 13 buildings on the board. But 13 buildings is all the Queen Walkers may need. Yuda, 14, coming in to close out this war. Queen Charge into Lalo, anti two star base, 88% is what he'll need to win it. Well, archers come down over on the side. No time pressure now. 
no time pressure. He can do what he's comfortable with. And he is definitely comfortable with a Queen Charge Lalo against an anti two star base. But he will need to protect the Queen on her flank. He may just go. Oh, I guess he doesn't really need to funnel out that left side compartment. He just has to delay the healers. He'll put in the blimp to go in after the. So, because I'm a couple black mines with that Kokaloon. But he puts the blimp in to go pull the CC and get this Inferno out of the way there. No rage required for that drop there because a uh, fairly easy compartment. He continues the queen to walk past that. He starts all the way at the top corner there and then wraps all the way around to the right side of the base there. He will need to wrap her around where the Yeti Blimp dropped, but he has a good angle of approach here. The heal is delayed until far past that air defense to be able to strike them down. And his unicorn stain very well protected as well. Already funneled out the left and right corner with a couple of archers that came down super early into the attack there while he made his way through. But keep an eye on that time because even though he's not racing the clock to beat the timers for the tiebreaker, still has to finish it before the timer expires. Here comes the wall breaker going into. Okay, yeah, he's got to do two wall breaks there. That makes sense. He'll get into the core of the base there. The king will work to the outside and the queen will hopefully go in and he, she does perfect. Perfect. Perfect pathing into the core of the base here as he pops that ward ability, protects the queen, the king, and obviously the warden and all the barbarians that were generated by that king ability. Push his way to the town hall, get the town hall down, no drama there, and the heroes are sweeping around, picking up some excellent value around the outside. King holds the tension of all the defenses that the queen isn't holding the tension of, and the road champion stays safe all the way through, but now picking up some damage now, pops her ability. I stuck in the tornado trap and while well, the defense is transferred over to her after the freeze wore off and he will lose his road champion but he starts in lalo a small time for it up at the top of the base there just gotta get another 30 buildings here and i think he should have enough for that the queen's still moving strong through the core of the base down pops near the queen and the only traps out that was his only hound he's got to power through this multi and get the cleanup working over on that top corner and far left side as soon as these archer towers go down. He puts in a minion up in the top corner to make sure that he gets every single bit of percentage that he can. And he's quickly approaching the final percentage. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is. The Queen Walkers hold strong the entirety of this fight and push all the way to the end. But does he have the time to finish it now? Queen trying to get up there. She can reach over the wall here. He's got the headhunter working on the air defense. Three, two... What? No! 98% and Yuna falls short of the perfect war, but it is enough for the win. 14 to 14 and only nine buildings, separ 11 buildings, nine buildings, not many. 11 buildings separate these teams as Yuna falls barely short there, but it is enough for the win. Luckily, they got that defense, otherwise, that would have been a loss. <laughs> but that's how close this war came. Nice job, Queen Markers.